Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm Stephen T, and we're here for another Electric Vehicles Market Update, dated late April 2021, early May 2021, um, depending on when we publish. But of course, we're continuing our roundup of some of the biggest stories that dominated the first quarter of 2021. Now, before we continue, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe button, as well as the bell button for notifications and updates from us, as well as give us a thumbs up or like if you do enjoy what we do. We truly do appreciate your support and thank you for it. Also, feel free to comment below. We'll always try and respond to your comments. Now, as we pick up from where we left off last week, we're continuing to look at the importance of EV batteries, via V, the future of EVs in general, and Nichols role within that. We start this week with a fantastic article by the Financial Times and their journalist, Miss June Yoon. And so she's written this article with the headline, Lacks in Depth, a Solid Case for the Next Generation of Batteries. Now, this article is so detailed that it goes on further on to show us this interesting chart with data from City, Wood, McKenzie, and INSG showing us the demand for key electric vehicle raw materials is set to outstrip supply, and that the global supply and demand forecast in kilotons are shown here. Nickel on the left is the one we're looking at here for our purposes, with the production side of it in dark navy blue, while the cerulean sky blue side refers to the consumption of nickel. So you can see that this chart is a projection chart in terms of what it will look like in the next four or five years. We're here at 2021 where you're seeing that the production still, for our purposes, fortunately or unfortunately, <laughs> is higher than the consumption. But by 2024 and 2025, you notice that it's the other way around. Further in this article, there's another useful chart here from the ever-reliable source Refinitiv data. Metal prices have moved higher in recent months. I'm just going to pull this up here so we can see it more closely. You can see in lime green there, it refers to lithium, dark blue cobalt, and as always, cerulean for nickel for our purposes. Now, if you notice this graph here, you'll notice that lithium has gone on an upward trajectory following a bit of a dip. The same sort of shape and pattern followed for cobalt, while nickel, as we can see here, right on the far right-hand side here on 2021, has had that dip that we saw in the last episode, in the first quarter of this year, but has yet to experience that upward surge, which we've seen with lithium and cobalt. So are we to be expecting a similar upward trajectory for nickel? Perhaps so. In fact, Goldman Sachs analysts also see that EV battery specialists are the ones to look out for in this article here, by Mr. Sam Sheed of CNBC, Goldman Sachs named six EV battery stocks to watch beyond Tesla. And Sam Sheed goes on to write that the future of electric vehicles is going to be dictated by the firms who are trying to improve the batteries that power them, according to the Goldman Sachs analysts. So while Tesla is arguably the go-to stock for investors who want to back EVs, Goldman analysts believe that there's money to be made on companies working on niche battery technologies. So it's interesting that they're looking at who else will benefit from the EV boom, not just the automakers, the traditional automakers or the EV startups. It includes stocks and companies belonging to those who specialize in niche battery technologies, or better yet, a company that can do all of the above. Tesla is one such company. It straddles the niche market of battery technologies as well as developing electric vehicles and tech in general. Tesla has invested heavily in nickel, and we see why nickel is so important to Tesla as seen in this infographic right here. From mining.com, and can also be found in the Canadian Mining Journal, you can see that nickel is ranked right up there in terms of the metals that Tesla needs to build 20 million cars a year, one of its targets. The primary reason being that Tesla are developing battery technology with nickel in mind. One might even argue that Tesla's long-term end game might even be the wider home energy market and not just EVs alone. But as we saw in the last episode, at the core of Tesla, Tesla as a company is both an innovator and a disruptor. Now, some ask why that is, why Tesla continues to be fine or relatively fine, while others face a lot more uncertainty and volatility. Mizuho analyst Mr. V. J. Rakesh, excuse me, Mr. V. J. Rakesh, 
he explained some of the reasons why to the market insider. Now, in an article titled Mizuho Bullish on Tesla and Neo Stock, What EV Investors Need to Know, the market's insider interviews the EV analyst, Mr. Rakesh, whom we've talked about, and he gives his thesis on Tesla. He says, Tesla is the only original equipment manufacturer with its own in-house battery supply and also an industry-leading 4680 battery cell technology with five times battery capacity and a 49% cost reduction versus any battery available today. He adds that with batteries forming 30% of the cost of the electric vehicles, lower costs with scale is key to sustainable leadership and lowering the average retail price towards $25,000, driving EV affordability and disrupting the light vehicle production market. Now, elsewhere, he adds that Tesla is a 100-year disruptor driving an electric future. And for him, it isn't just EV production alone that gives Tesla defensible EV leadership in the global market. For him, the company's advanced battery and advanced drive assistance systems, known as the ADAS, also provide a moat. Meanwhile, Tesla and Panasonic's direct rivals LG of Korea, a huge shable in Korea, and General Motors, a huge corporation in the United States, obviously, we're familiar with General Motors um, and all they did in the 20th century. Well, they're all expanding into the battery space as, as partners now. And according to CNBC, they're planning to spend $2.3 billion on a second EV battery plant in the US. Now, the three points, key points, that is, that CNBC's Michael Whalen, the author of this article, has written about is that First of all, GM and LG Chemicals will obviously, self-evidently, be investing $2.3 billion in a second US battery cell plant. So that one is quite a clear point. The second point is that the plant will support, support excuse me, production of GM's upcoming Cadillac Lyric crossover and other future EVs at a nearby assembly plant. That's quite clear as well. Now, the third one is possibly the most important point because it shows you how important development and production of battery cells are for automakers because for them the supply and production of battery cells are crucial for automakers pivoting towards EVs. Now you can see a photo here of the GM CEO Mary Barra speaking during an EV day last year at the tech and design campus in Motortown, Detroit. And she's announced that the plant for their Ultium Cells LLC joint venture will be to support production of GM's upcoming projects, including the Cadillac Lyric crossover and other future EVs at a nearby assembly plant. Now, now notice they've got an LLC for the Ultium Cells system. Further on down, she mentions the Ultium Cells system again. The addition of a second all-new Altium battery cell plant in the US with our joint venture, LG Energy Solutions from Korea, is another major step in our transition to an all-electric future. So we see that there is a battle between the EV giants in the supply and production of battery cells and that both Tesla and General Motors are hard at work to develop these new battery systems for their own advantages, obviously. Now, we saw in the last episode that Tesla have been developing their own cathode systems. And in the last article, we saw that the battery system that General Motors has announced is called the Altium battery system. So just what is Altium made of? Now, according to this next article from Electrek titled, General Motors says its new low cobalt EV battery cell has 60% more capacity. This article by Bradley Berman at the start of March this year says that basically, GM has emphasized that its core battery strategy was about, about building a battery cell. And Adam Kwiatkowski, GM's director of advanced vehicle design, said, the crown jewel of the Altium system is the battery cell itself. Meanwhile, Andy Uri, Mr. Andy Uri, the lead engineer for batteries, said the new cell has 60% more energy capacity than what's been used in the Bolt EV. Also very interesting, and I want you to see this really clearly here. General Motors is also changing from a nickel manganese cobalt chemistry to an NCMA mix. The A in the alphabet soup stands for aluminum, the key to reducing the cobalt by 70%. While developed with LG Chemicals, its partner, 
the chemistry is proprietary for GM. Now, Tesla is also reportedly making that switch to NCMA with LG Chem's help as well for use in the Made in China Model 3 that's already been rolled out. Now, Mr. Uri adds that the NCMA chemistry is a giant leap on the road towards higher nickel, lower cobalt chemistries. And he added that it's going to break through the $100 per kilowatt hour cost target known as the commercial threshold as we saw in the last episode. Yet again, you're seeing article after article, we see nickel forms an important part of both Tesla's and GM systems. So be it NCA, uh, NCM, and CMA, what's the consistent element in all this? I mean, of course, cobalt, but you've already seen that, that out of the two, they're going towards higher nickel. Business Korea's article by analyst John Ko begins by saying that nickel is becoming increasingly important and that in the rechargeable battery industry, everyone wants nickel. Now, John Ko is an analyst with NH Investment and Securities. So for John Ko, both the supply and demand side are going to compete fiercely over nickel. And he believes that the rechargeable battery industry players on both the demand side and the supply side will actively seek to secure supply chains for nickel. To this end, Tesla has already signed contracts with a number of mining companies to supply nickel, and LG Energy Solution, a Korean company, is seeking to establish a nickel mining joint venture, based on media reports, with Indonesian mining company ANTAM. For John Co., future nickel demand expansion is to be driven by rechargeable battery demand growth. And over 2021 to 2025, true 2025, I should say, demand for nickel for use in rechargeable batteries is projected to increase at a compound annual growth rate of 16%, outpacing the 3% overall growth rate for nickel. That said, supply demand conditions for class one nickel, the type of nickel used in rechargeable or EV batteries, should be tight for a lengthy period to come. Accordingly, Stable procurement of nickel will likely be a determining factor in gaining a competitive edge in the rechargeable battery industry. For Mr. John Cohen analysts, ultimately stable procurement of nickel, um, that is the purchasing of nickel inventory, um, this will likely be a determining factor in gaining a competitive edge in the rechargeable battery industry. Well, nickel is the kind of hard asset that seems to be sitting close to the heart of um, all EV tech development in that sense. It's part of everything that's burgeoning in the EV tech space. In a sense, we can see why John Coe was saying it's looking good for equity stakes in nickel. Um, and our audiences may also remember what Elon Musk was saying about nickel in a very famous interview clip that was on YouTube. It's, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's gone viral, but um, I can't bring it up because of copyright issues, obviously. <laughs> so you may wish to look it up. But he was basically talking about how lithium-ion batteries could easily have been renamed graphite nickel batteries. Now, our final article for this week takes us back to CNBC and this headline here, Electric automakers must brace for rising battery materials costs, Goman Analyst says. Now again, Goldman Sachs again, giving us some analysis. And we apologize for constantly quoting Goldman Sachs, but they were actually speaking to Miss Evelyn Chang, the author of this article, giving her their main point, which is that growing demand for electric power batteries will cause prices of the main materials to surge. Now, the Goldman Sachs analyst team came up with a report. And while the report didn't give specific price targets for the commodities, the analyst model predicted a return to historical peak prices would more than double the cost of lithium for electric battery makers. That of cobalt would also double, while the cost of nickel would rise by 60%. Now, just pay attention to that last line there. The cost of nickel would rise by 60%. Now, you can see that according to the Goldman analyst, prices for the three main natural resources have been rising since the start of 2021, the Goldman report said, we believe that in order to promote sustainable EV industries, some countries may consider implementing policies to increase national stockpiles. Now, on that note, it's a good place for us to end today's show on because we're seeing that the Goldman analysts are bullish towards nickel. And as we said at the start of the show, 
The connection between nickel and EV batteries means that nickel is set possibly, perhaps, for an upward trajectory and surge. Now, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for, for today. So, until the next EV Metals market update, as Patrick always says, silver up, saddle up, and in the meantime, take care. Excited about the opportunities in the coming electric vehicle revolution and looking to invest in this electrification super cycle? Demand for battery metals like nickel and cobalt is expected to rise in tandem with the increase in demand for lithium-ion batteries in electric vehicles. You can now buy nickel and cobalt parcels with silver bullion and have a direct price exposure to both battery metals. You have the option to buy 2-ton nickel parcels or 250-kilogram cobalt drums. Every parcel will be fully insured against loss and guaranteed to be genuine by Silver Bullion. Selling your parcels to lock in profits is as simple as logging into your Silver Bullion account, selecting the parcels and clicking sell. Buy your nickel and cobalt parcels now at Silver Bullion's website www.silverbullion.com.sg slash eb and participate in the electric vehicle revolution. Interested but have questions? Email us at sales at silverbullion.com.sg or give us a call at plus 65 6100 3040.